On Sunday, uh, federal authorities closed a, some rail bridges in Eagle Pass and El Paso, Texas. Uh, these are two crucial points for transportation of freight between uh, Texas and Mexico in order to uh, redeploy, they said. They closed these so that they could redeploy Border Patrol elsewhere. And according to Union Pacific Rail Company, the Eagle Pass and El Paso border crossings represent 45% of its cross-border business with Mex Mexico. You know, this is a, our country's second largest trade partner. Well, the Biden administration has chosen to, the, the faster processing of migrants over international commerce. And what effects is all this going to have? Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is Congressman Randy Weber. He serves on the House Committee on Energy and Commerce, as well as the Committee on Science, Space, and Technology. He represents the 14th District of the great state of Texas. Congressman Weber, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thank you, Jody. Good to be here. Well, it's great to be here uh, with you as well. And listen, I've noticed right away there you are wearing a tie. I have dressed down knowing that you are out of session. And here you, in your, your wonderful fashion is always keeping me humble. There you are showing up with a tie. But uh, nonetheless, great to see you, my well, have friend. You seen, have you seen what tie it is? Hey, look, and make matters, I've listened, a pro-Israel tie. Way to go. Absolutely. Outstanding. Absolutely. Proud of you. I'm proud of you. All right, let's jump into to this discussion here. Um, you are the master of one-liner, so let me put it to you this way. We, we have rail bridges now being shut down. Is it fair to say that the Biden administration's policy on the southern border has been a train wreck? Well, absolutely. That's gone on for a long time. Uh, I actually filed a bill recently that said, let's reinstate the remaining Mexico policy. People ought to have to stay there to, to turn in their claim that they need asylum. And uh, Biden's, uh, oh, by President Biden, I call him Obama's fourth or third term, has done everything the opposite. He's absolutely opened the borders to let everybody in. And what this is doing, Jody, it's interrupt. Not only is it interrupting international trade, Mexico is Texas's number one trading partner. Biden doesn't care about how it affects agriculture, business, uh, parts for automobiles, whatever the. Uh, uh, trade may be, he wants to make it easier for these people to get across. It's plain and simple. And you know what? He's on track for that. Yeah, he really is. And looking at the images even on the screen right now, it is it's it is beyond words to describe what's going on there. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted you on, Congressman, is because your role on energy and commerce, the committee there, uh, and you were just alluding to it. What kind of impact will these closings of the rail system have on commerce? Well, some regulation, I mean, some uh, uh, authorities are saying uh, it will impact us two, it will be shut down $2 million a day in trade. Now that doesn't, think about that, think about that, number one. Number two, think of the increased uh, traffic that's gonna come across and all Biden's gonna do is move CBP agents over now uh, to assist with everything else they can at the border crossings, even on train tracks. And that doesn't uh, really address the problem at all. We're just spending more money, more manpower to make sure more people can get in this country. He's ignoring the root of the problem. Our commerce will suffer. There's no question. And, uh, and when the commerce of Texas suffers, the commerce of the country suffers as well. Uh, to, to go a little bit deeper into this whole issue with the southern border. Uh, what, what's your take on the negotiations that are taking place in the Senate right now for some more restrictions? There's no question in my mind, Congressman, that the Senate is fully aware that whatever they come up with is ultimately going to have to pass in the House. Uh, what are you hearing as far as any progress in the Senate? Well, we're hearing a stalemate. You hear all kinds of rumors out of, of the Senate. Of course, as we you know, we like to say the Democrats are the opposition, but the Senate is the enemy because uh, they want to shove everything down our throat. In fact, Schumer said that. We passed over a pretty good bill to help our friends Israel with the pay for, as you know. And we said that was going to be, we would demand nothing, that was it, nothing less. And of course, Schumer's infamous comment was, well, the House doesn't really understand how it works. 
oh, we understand how it works. Y'all want to shove this down our throat. You want it your way or the highway. We don't have time for those games. Our border is wide open. My district doesn't want to fund Ukraine uh, anymore until we get some extreme accountability, until we take care of our own border problems. And yet this, again, this Biden White House is on track to continue the train wreck known as his administration. Absolutely. And the governor of your state and uh, many leaders are in your state are doing everything they can. In fact, uh, Governor Abbott just signed, I believe it was yesterday or, uh, or just yep. within the last few days, a new law that makes uh, illegal immigration a state crime. Uh, and look, it's, it's states like Texas and Arizona that, that bears so much of the weight of Biden's border crisis. Uh, what's your take on the uh, law that the governor signed in spite of the fact that the White House is pushing against it? Well, we're going to have to bear that burden. You know, I was in the Texas House for four years and I was vice chair of the border committee my second term. I can tell you things about the Texas border. Back then, we were putting $200 million a session on the border. Now it's like $3 billion. We're going to bear the brunt of this. Uh, if we're going to arrest those who are illegally entering the, com the country, and that was the, that's the intent here, we got to have a place to st uh, keep them. Yeah, uh, you got to feed them. You know, you got to give them a warm or an air conditioned or heated place to stay. Uh, you got to tend to their needs. So it's going to impact Texas in a big way. Fortunately, Texas has got, uh, you know, some surplus money built up, but there's no, absolutely no way on God's green earth that we should have to pay for the international border problem uh, with Mexico. And this administration is intent on letting it roll, rock and roll just like it is. Yeah, and I think the vast majority of Americans are right alongside of you. Uh, and it's just uh, stunning the, the resistance from this administration. You would at least think that in an election year that Democrats as a whole, the White House would at least want to give the appearance of trying to do something on the southern border. But they, uh, to, at least from my perspective, they don't even appear to want to do that. Yeah, I, I think it's blatant in your face. And you look at the what happens as a result of that, Jody. Uh, the CBP sources said in the last 24 hours, there was more than 12,600 migrants encountered. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind that those are the ones we know about. Those are the ones we catch, the ones that they call right. the Godaways. We don't know about them. And, you know, the FBI has put out a warning for heightened alert that we're, they're afraid there may be some terroristic acts in our country because of those coming across from countries like Syria, Iran, Iraq, and, and that area over there. And listen, yep. 12,600 migrants in 24 up. hours. Yeah, if it was 10,000, it's 300,000 a month.